Hey, what's going on everyone? Today, we're taking a look at a certified for Microsoft Teams Rooms, a Teams Rooms on Android solution. It is an all-in-one video collaboration bar geared toward that mid to large size meeting room. This is the A30 from Yaley. As you can see, the A30 has a dual eye configuration for advanced AI-based tracking capabilities as well as the onboard speakers and microphones, and of course, the onboard OS that provides the Teams Rooms app. In today's video, we'll be taking an up-close and personal look at the A30, going over its specs and features. We'll then be setting it up and getting it configured for Teams Rooms. And finally, we'll do some demos using it in a Teams Room setting and going over the AI capabilities that the A30 provides. Let's dig in. The A30 features an array of eight MEMS microphones and built-in speakers. Yalix enhanced noise cancellation also ensures that only what needs to be heard is heard from within the room. All other peripheral noises get filtered out. The unique dual eye camera configuration features an eight megapixel, 120 degree field of view camera and up to 10 times hybrid digital zoom. In addition to the AI-based noise cancellation capabilities, the other AI capabilities include speaker tracking mode, group framing, and in beta, the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Taking a look at the back of the A30, over on the far right, we've got all of our ports. At the very far left, we've got our inset reset button, power, the VC hub port, line in and out right there in the center, and then HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. If you are using an A single display configuration, make sure you're plugged into HDMI 1. Then there is the Ethernet port right here. And finally, our security lock slot on the far right. Additionally, on the side of the device, on the same side that the other ports are on, there are two USB-A ports. This will be important as Yealink recommends that for your initial configuration, you use a mouse and the keyboard for initial sign-in and setup of the Teams Rooms app. The very bottom of the device has rubber grips on both sides, allowing us to simply set the device on a surface at the front of the room, or we can include the mounting option, allowing us to mount our device on the wall or to a display potentially. When the A30 ships, it comes with this metal bracket that has some rubber gripping on the back to protect the surface of the camera and around the edge of this eye that protrudes. The metal bracket simply holds this second protruding camera in place so that it doesn't get bumped around or move or get damaged during transport. Flipping the device on its back, at the very bottom, there are typically gonna be two screws in here that will hold this metal bracket in place. You must remove these and then carefully lift the metal bracket off before setting the device up and using it. Remember, in this video, we're not gonna be covering the CTP-18 itself and its setup. Again, refer to the link in the upper corner of this video for that. But to set up our A30, we have a three meter network cable that comes with the A30. And we'll take that and plug that cable in right here in our network slot. We've then got the power supply and we'll take that cable and plug it in right over here on the left. And finally, the A30 ships with two HDMI cables. Again, if this is going to be a single display setup, we will simply plug in the first HDMI cable to HDMI 1 slot. In our case, we have a dual display, so we'll take that secondary HDMI cable and plug it into that second slot. Given that this is a team setup, we don't need to worry about that VC hub slot, and we've got no line in or out to plug in. With everything plugged in, we plug in the A30. Once we have power, we see that green LED light up at the bottom. The privacy shutter turns on on both of the eyes there, the dual eye config, and we let it go through its initial boot up sequence. Coming on up to our display, we can see that we've got the Yealink logo. The operating system is powering on. So once we sign in with our room resource account, again, not covered in this video, and the account is licensed with a Microsoft Teams room standard license, we're signed in as Yealink A30, a resource account I created there. We're signed in on both the CTP18 as well as the A30. Coming up top, we see both monitors have the A30 on there. I'm gonna come back down, take a look 
at our CTP18. And we now need to pair the two devices. We can see that the CTP18 sees the A30 right there. They must be on the same network segment to see each other in pair. So I'll click that. And once we click it, it wants us to put a code in. The code is displayed on the display right above the A30. You can see that up there. So we'll input the code and finish pairing. Put our code in there, we say pair. And it says we're all set. We are now configured, also all set up top. We are now set up as a fully functional Microsoft Teams Rooms on Android using the Yealink A30 paired with the CTP18. So before we demo the AI capabilities and putting this thing in a Microsoft Teams meeting, let's take a little tour of the device, shall we? We've got the Meet Now capabilities right up front for our Teams Rooms app. If we go into our settings here, we can Meet Now, Share capability if we have that present, a feedback section, your control right here at the bottom, and then we can go into our settings. You can report an issue from here. You can go to your About, which gives you all your uh, version information and then we can come out to device settings. Now, a lot of this will be familiar from other Microsoft Teams rooms on Androids, uh, but this is going to be specific to the A30, uh, similar to the A20, but a little bit different on some of the settings. Right up top, our accessibility, the ability to reboot the device, our about section, which will give us our IP and all of our different versions as well. And then we come down into the camera settings section. Now we go to control, and when we do that, both eyes open up on the A30, and um, it's obviously zoomed in really close because I'm right in front of it, but we can manually control our PTZ capabilities right here. I can zoom in, I can go over or over, or I can zoom out, and I can just say reset to get it back to where we started. Coming down to exposure, I'm not gonna change any of that, but you can see that you've got some exposure settings, white balance settings, and then further graphic settings if you need to do any other adjustments to your actual image. Now when we come down to the others section, this is where things start to get interesting from a video and AI perspective. We got lens calibration capabilities here. I'm not going to calibrate it right now, but that's where you'd go and get things calibrated for the lens. You'll notice that interestingly our framing is not enabled by default. It is a manual control by default. Uh, we want to turn that on. So we're going to turn that on and it exposes a few more, a couple more fields here. First, our framing mode. So it exposes one more field here, the framing mode. Uh, we have auto framing, which is where you have a group of people in a room. Some are coming, some are going, and you wanna make sure that as your group changes or as the group needs to be identified, the picture gets framed in to capture the group properly without including a lot of extra wasted space in the room and in the picture for remote attendees. So that's your auto framing. Then we've got speaker tracking, and this is where we're going to follow the person speaking around the room, regardless of other people being in the room. I mean, what's a speaker framing is gonna do? It's just gonna find the active speaker, and if they move or if someone else starts speaking after a few moments, it will kick in and find uh, the speaker. And then we've got PIP mode, which is in beta, the picture in picture mode, and that is where the room is captured in a little picture that is kept inset. It is the PIP picture. The larger picture is the active speaker. So we're, we're keeping focused on who is actively speaking, but we are still keeping the context of the room in that picture-in-picture uh, -picture, uh, mode. So those are our three different modes. We'll demo a little bit of that in a minute here. Then we've got our camera pan direction. So we can keep it at normal or reverse it. If we are clicking that pan button and it's going the opposite direction that we think it should, then we can reverse that to get what feels more natural to us. And finally, we can reset the camera if we uh, are, want to put everything back to the way it came by default and uh, kind of start from scratch with setting up our camera in a custom way. Finally, we come down to the admin section here and we got a number of things for administering the device. We got the language that's set by default. All this is gonna require the admin password. Best practices is to change the default password, but right now I've got the default password. So, you know, I'm gonna leave it at English, but there's a number of different options in here. You can change your time and date. Display setting, uh, that's just your backlight time. Wireless microphones, if you have them and are going to use them. Bluetooth capability, it is on by default, but Open Discover is off. Audio input device, if you had them. 
audio output device if you had them. Otherwise, it just uses the onboard built-in mic array and speakers. Network settings. This is where we can either set up DHCP or set up a static IP. I had DHCP to set the device up, but then I put a static IP in there later. We can change this for both our collab bar and our touch console. Keep in mind, if you change the network, then they will become unpaired and you won't be able to manage the collab bar from the touch console. You will then need to manage the collab bar with a separate uh, keyboard and mouse. So remember that. Don't make a change that changes it to a different network unless you're ready to manage it separately. All your other regular network settings are in here as well. Uh, proxy settings, Wi-Fi settings. Again, all this stuff is per collab bar and per touch console. Wireless access point settings. Uh, a place where we can go and check for upgrades for each device as well. Uh, the debug section, collecting logs, resetting to factory settings. Our team's admin settings. So coming in here gives us the regular stuff we expect for teams. Our calling capabilities, meeting settings, you know, for our meeting rooms, we're used to seeing all this stuff in here, showing your meeting names, allow Bluetooth beaconing, um, automatically accept proximity-based meeting invitations, allow remote control, and then max room occupancy notification, which is where you will have configured a room with a certain number of max participants, and the AI and the camera can count the number of people, and you will be able to use that information to display notifications if the room is over occupancy. Wallpapers, we can change our wallpaper if we want to. We'll just keep our default for now though. Uh, console pairing, we're already paired, but you can reset that pairing or unpair the device. And then finally, we can sign out of the Teams client if we want to do so. All these are protected by the admin password. Advanced features, coming back in and putting in our admin password again. We've got the quick ball setting and camera control just like on the A20. And then finally, a place to reset the admin password, and that is recommended as best practice. On to the demo. You can see on the far end right now, that is a laptop across the room, that I'm actually in a Microsoft Teams meeting, and I have invited the MTR RA30 to this Teams meeting. Now you can see on the screen up here on the upper right that we've got that meeting on our calendar. So down here on the CTP18, I'm gonna click Join. And once we join, our cameras open up their eyes. And after muting both sides, far end and this end, so that we don't have any crazy echo, you can now see on the left side, this is the far end laptop catching me from across the room. And this is the A30, our in-room camera. We are split across both screens. We got a dual screen display in a Microsoft Teams rooms meeting. All your regular settings down here on the CTP18 that we would expect. We've got our gallery settings. We've got all of our different, uh, I could throw a thumbs up and we'll see that up on the screen coming from my side. Uh, we could share content, volume control up and down. We can turn our camera on or off. We'll open that back up. And right now we've got the A30 set to do auto framing. So we'll transition directly from our Microsoft Teams meeting demo here into auto framing. Right now, it's focused in on just me over on the right-hand side here. So as I move around the room, it's going to follow me. Just takes a second or two to recalibrate where I'm at using that 120 degree field of view, and then it will uh, scope back in. Right now, kind of thinks there's a little bit more to the room. There we go. So that's the auto framing. I'm going to move back over this direction. It's a pretty wide view. So now I'm back in front of uh, where my far end laptop is and the A30 camera goes and figures out where I'm at and puts me back in the frame. Okay, demo number two is the speaker tracking. I went out of the meeting, I came back in and, and then changed the tracking to where it was speaker tracking instead of auto framing. Then I came back into the meeting, we're recording again. And now you see me on the right hand side, that is the A30 view. And the idea here is that if I'm in a room of more people, instead of it framing the whole group of people, it's going to follow, it's gonna jump around to who is speaking. That's a little hard to demonstrate without more people in the room, which I do not currently have. But I will just go to the other side of the room, start talking over there, and we will see that it does indeed follow me. 
It's going to look very similar to the auto framing because again, we don't have more people in the room. But the idea is that instead of it keeping that whole group in focus, it's going to focus just on me as the speaker. So I have moved to the other side of the room. I am the speaker and it is coming back over to focus in on me, the speaker. That is speaker tracking instead of auto framing. Okay, now for our third demo, I've got my little buddy here. Ella is gonna help me, you good girl. Just stay right there, okay? She is gonna be my picture in picture demo buddy. As you can see on the screen, it has detected two beings in the room. It gave us the picture in picture up top. I, as the speaker, am gonna move over here and it's gonna keep our picture in picture in place, but it's gonna now focus on me as the speaker while myself and Ella are in the picture in picture. On the far end, that's what you see as well. So there you go, a little picture in a picture demo using my buddy Ella, the very good dog who sits in an office chair. There it is, the Yealink A30 meeting bar, certified for Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams Rooms and Android solution. Hope you found the video helpful. Please splash it all over your social media accounts if you did. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already. Of course, turn on notifications if once you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope we'll see you back here for the next device overview video.